Oh boy, this is a good dog. Which treat will he choose to eat first? What about which one will he eat second? In this video, we will discuss counting methods. In particular, we will use the tree diagram for counting, and we will discuss the fundamental counting principle, permutations and combinations. This young man over here is Tom. We have five treats for Tom. Go ahead, Tom, pick one to eat first. Okay, so if there are five treats and Tom gets to eat one, he could have made any of five different choices. He could have chosen to eat beef, chicken, pumpkin, fish, or spinach. Okay, let's take it up a notch. What if he gets to eat two treats? How many ways can he make the choice to eat the first and second treat? Well, this is the tree diagram for counting, and we officially have our first branch. If Tom chooses to eat the beef treat first, he can choose to either eat the chicken, the pumpkin, the fish, or the spinach treat second. Notice that he had five choices for the first treat, though for his second treat, he only has four choices because one is already gone. Gone? Gone where? In his belly. Okay, so if he eats the chicken treat first, the only choices left for his second treat are the beef, the pumpkin, the fish, or the spinach. You get it. Basically, he has four choices after eating his first treat. And remember, at the end of the day, Tom only gets to actually have two treats. So for example, he could have chosen the beef and the chicken treat, or he could have chosen the chicken and pumpkin treat, he could have chosen the pumpkin and spinach treat, he could have chosen any one of these two different options shown here in this tree diagram. There are a total of one, two, three, four, dot, 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 if I count them all up, 20 different ways Tom could have chosen to eat in two out of the five treats. Before we move on to Tom eating three out of five treats, I want to point out that this tree diagram is going to get harder and harder to make. So let's notice what just happened. Each of the five treats that we started with branched four times. And notice that five times four equals 20. Such a good boy, Tom. Go ahead and pick out a third treat. Let's draw another branch to our tree diagram. If Tom had the beef treat first, then the chicken treat, his only choices left would be the pumpkin, the fish, or the spinach. Similarly, if he had the beef treat first, then the pumpkin, his only choices left would be the chicken, fish, or spinach. Dot, 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 etc. I'm not going to finish drawing all these little branches because it would take forever. Though, notice that the five treats that we started with each branched four times. And now, the second treats will each branch three times. And five times four times three equals 60. So we can conclude that there are 60 ways Tom could have made those three treat choices. Okay, so hopefully you're starting to see the pattern here. If Tom gets to eat four out of the five treats, he will have two left over after eating three treats. So there will be five times four times three times two equals 120 total ways Tom could eat four out of the five treats. Lastly, if Tom gets to eat five out of five treats, there isn't much of a choice on the last treat since there's only one left over. So again, five times four times three times two times one is 120. There are 120 ways Tom could choose to eat five out of the five treats. All done. Ha ha ha. Not really. I didn't explain the fundamental counting principle or permutations or combinations. Or did I? Well, let me explain. Starting with the fundamental counting principle, which states 
that if an event has n possible outcomes and another event has m possible outcomes, then there are n times m total possible outcomes. Okay, so what does that mean? Basically, this is saying that if, for example, there are five choices for Tom and then only four choices for Tom, then Tom can make a total of five times four equals 20 different choices. Okay, so that wasn't so bad. Hopefully you're hanging in there with me. Now let's talk about permutations. Permutations refer to the number of ways that we can select k elements from n choices. I know this might seem really abstract, uh, though everything that we've calculated thus far has been a permutation. For example, we calculated the number of ways Tom could choose three out of five treats. This is five permute three. And there's a fancy formula that we could have used to find five permute three. Here it is. You know how mathematicians love their fancy formulas. And very briefly, in case you're interested, I will show you how to use this fancy formula. Basically, here n is 5 and k is 3. So remember that the explanation mark in math means that you multiply that number by every integer before that number until 1. So 5 factorial is just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And 2 times 1 is in the numerator and denominator, so they cancel out. And you're basically left with 60, which is the same answer we found using the fundamental counting principle. Of course, you don't actually need to know how to calculate this fancy formula by hand nowadays, because we have Excel, calculators, and even Google will calculate it for you if you type in 5 permute 3 into the Google search bar. Really quickly, I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel. So open up Excel, double click into one of the cells, permute, open the parentheses, number, number is your bigger number, so 5, comma, number chosen, that's your smaller number, 3. Close parentheses and press enter, 60. Wow, calculators nowadays are so nice. All done. Ha ha ha, just kidding. There's an elephant in our room. We didn't talk about combinations yet. It turns out that combinations are very similar to permutations, so much so that students often get them confused for good reason. They both have fancy formulas. The difference between these two counting methods is really important though. In permutations, order matters. In combinations, order does not matter. For example, back to when Tom was choosing three out of five treats. Tom selecting the beef first, the chicken second, and the pumpkin third was counted as a completely different choice than Tom choosing the beef, pumpkin, then chicken. This makes sense if we're trying to see what order Tom likes his treats. What is his top most favorite treat of all time, his second most favorite treat, then his third? In this scenario, order matters and permutations are the way to go. Though, what if we don't care about which one is Tom's first, second, and third choice? Rather, we just want to know which three are his favorite so that we don't have to buy five bags of treats and we can just buy three bags of treats in the future. So we don't care about the order of the top three. We just care which are his top three. Here, we would use combinations. I've written the fancy formula over here in case you're interested. Notice that you'll see this written two different ways. 5C3, or 5 choose 3, is also written as 5, and then it's just written on top of 3. Kind of looks like a fraction, but there's no fraction bar between it. Okay, these mean the same thing, so don't worry about the different notations. Okay, and basically they mean 5 choose 3. You have 5, and you're combining it with 3, and you can do, use the formula and figure out the answer. You can also use Excel, just like how we did with permute, except you write combine. Either way, you'll get the same answer, 
which is 10. If you try to draw a tree diagram for this, you just need to be super careful that you're not repeating the same choice. And this is basically what it will look like. Tom will be able to choose the beef, chicken, pumpkin, or the beef, chicken, fish or beef, chicken, spinach or beef, pumpkin, fish or beef, pumpkin, spinach, and I can just continue listing it all. There are one, two, three, etc. 10 different choices which is the same answer Excel would have given us or the formula would have given us. Welp, you've done it. Whew, that was a lot. And I hope it made sense and that you now feel more comfortable using the fundamental counting principle permutations and combinations. Thank you for watching.